Apparently violence is the answer. Did I take, take, take the bullets already? Apparently I did. that get the ass swamp monsters or something Pedicans. Small sunken city vibes here. Daily bulletin. What the hell is going on? Okay, that was. Journey to Conqueror, Roots and Medicine. Don't let them get inside, Convair. They're not the good guy. Uh huh. Are you. Is this your store? There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's store. Jeremy did this. How? Packed with the dog, man. Uh huh. Yeah, warned us, but we didn't think much of it. I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh yeah? How much you paying you? Hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth tonight. Are you a thinking man, compare? No, not if I can help it. <laughs> you know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace the guy's on. Juju the talisman? necklace? Talisman. That's right. It's some magic charm he got from Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess? You know surprising things, compare. Yeah, the mama Loa. Here, take the key. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Okay, that cool. if you go there, you can find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. Baptiste Keys. Jackson's Point is in French Quarter. Clerk's office is one in the library. Okay, okay. Weird. Push out and reptile. Okay. Snake oil.
You want to come along? Nah, I'm going to stay here for a while. Inter interesting store. Need a new suit. I think he is going to need a new pants when this is over. Do we have a map? No, we don't. Okay, that was quick, quick escape. So, are these cools? Okay, that was a plant. And I, I still have a, my flashlight, so that's good. Oh. Voodoo stuff. The two bullets. Oh no. Okay, they are vomiting. Ah, uh, revolting creatures. Don't miss, don't miss. Oh, but that was explosive. Okay, found it. Kill an enemy with fire. Okay. Find your own talisman. That's a weird one. Polished black sandstone in the middle has a glass finish. Picture hiding within itself. Only two bullets left. <clears throat> I suppose I should probably spam the queue. I think it's meant for the talisman. So this is a I think it needs numbers, like coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. Okay, it's in several pages long. How did you c first come to understand such things, Signor? Battered boiler in the basement would leave me cemetery. 
The old upstairs clock take me that hateful mount of Claremont Harbor. To some of my memories my past. Please let my talisman take me there. Darkman offered me a prison. Okay, so here it is. Eight, five, three. Or three, five, eight. I think it needs numbers, like coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. Yeah, three five eight. It's showing something. A place? Where is that? A place. Huh. Okay. Mighty interesting. Detective, I was wondering when you were going to show up. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. I understand you are working for Jeremy Hartwood's niece. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. We came here for her uncle. I just didn't expect... I didn't expect this. You are Dr. Slightly Gray, bloody. Right? That's right. You don't happen to have some identification, Detective. I'm not keen on having strangers prying into my business. Prying into my business. <laughs> Detective Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. Enjoying the view carré, Detective? Those old French quarters, the voodoo people, the gangsters. I'm sure you live an exciting life. Well, that's not quite like the stories, Doc. Just trying to make a living. Aren't we all making a living? Well, welcome to Dosetto, Detective. I hope your time here will be useful. Now, what can I do for you? Why don't you tell me where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? <laughs> Why wouldn't that make for a short visit? I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know. A drink, Detective? Anything brandy. Oh, you do belong in the French quarters, Detective. Armagnac or cognac? You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a connoisseur. Having low standards is not a virtue, detective. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. What can you tell me about Jeremy? I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Doctor-patient confidentiality. I'm sure you understand. Sure. But he is crazy. And he's gone missing. Why? Here, try this. Ooh, it's good. Got a bite. <laughs> it's called a sidecar. The trick is not to be afraid of the tartness of the lemon. Then, for goodness sake, don't overdo the triple sec. Okay, what can you tell me about Jeremy? Ah, oh, well, let me think. He is an anxious man, constantly worried about events not presenting themselves according to his model of predestination. Uh -huh. He complains about things not being carried out in the right order, and that some things simply shouldn't be. Is any of this helpful to you? Uh, not really. Uh, I was hoping for some direction where to look next. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you then. You should talk to my orderlies. They have been looking for him for a while. I'm sure they would appreciate your help. Yeah, I ran into Batiste earlier. Come to think of it, he... He might have given me a lead. Oh, excellent. So your investigation is already underway. I'm gonna go. But I'm sure we'll meet again. 
I guess. Looking forward to it. Safe returns. Okay. Despite me getting stuck, in, yeah, interesting. Detective Carnby, how did you... where did you go? I was just talking to Dr. Gray. You disappeared? No, it's not what you think. Have you... have you found anything strange going on here? Yes. Everyone is being incredibly evasive and I can't figure out why. No, I mean something you can't explain. Paranormal, even. Detective? I really need you to get yourself together. I can't do this alone. Forget it. I'll figure it out. Do you want to come see Dr. Gray? No. I want to I want to try something out. With this talisman, I think I can follow Jeremy to the place he mentioned in the book. What was the name? Do you remember something Spanish? T Tarawea. Yeah, that's where I need to go. Detective? Are you going to be all right? <laughs> Bloody shirt. Yeah. Of course. Go talk to Dr. Gray. We'll rendezvous later. Yeah. Sound, sounds a bit crazy. This talisman brought me back from the French Quarter in the blink of an eye. If Jeremy can travel so easily, then he could be hiding anywhere. Even Tarawea. If he can do it, so can I. I just need to figure out how the talisman works. I saw you notice in the boiler room. You should know Mr. Chance won't be coming back. I got no business being in there myself, but... You can take a valve from the wine cellar if you want to try to stop the steam pouring out. Be careful. Wine cellar. Room T6. Dr. Elmore Lee Gray is DeSetto's chief doctor. Accounting and all administrative work is handled by me, Paul Waits. Magdalena Thompson, or Mags, is responsible for the household. Jean-Baptiste and Charlotte Tabois are responsible for keeping the guests' medical regiments in check. Finally, Jack Chance is our gardener, who can occasionally be seen in the conservatory, but is, for the most part, busy outside. There are currently six guests at Dossetto. Malcolm McCarthy and Ruth Talant reside on the first floor. Jeremy Hartwood, Elisabetta Perosi, Grace Saunders, and of course, Cassandra Beauregard live on the second floor. And third room is empty for some reason. We got the number six key, but it is a better pirosi. Paul, you're right about the plates on the boiler and the clock. They have been sabotaged, and I think I know who did it. They have something to do with Jeremy's episodes and how he seems to disappear at night. Right now, it's important that you keep an eye out for any of the pieces. I want to find out if I can repair the plates. Let me know if you find any of them. Lottie. Tell Lottie to take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. But there's one piece there. But I wonder how, how I'm going to get it. I'm not sure. This is records and some medicine. Patient files. Cassandra Beauregard, the beloved author. Very exciting, isn't it? What do you want to put down for a reason for admission? 
What her agent told us. Cassandra suffers from writer's block and needs to finish her moving picture script before the end of June. Mr. Chardot suggests Cassandra's heavy use of barbiturates is holding her back and risks ruining her career. And how should we summarize her personal history? Let's keep it short. Cassandra Beauregard is a beloved crime author who managed to pull herself out of poverty and into stardom. Five years ago, she tried killing herself by jumping off a balcony. The incident left her a cripple and now relies heavily on her wheelchair. And for diagnostic impressions? Cassandra suffers chronic back pain following her suicide attempt. She self-administers morphine to keep herself ambulant, but has become addicted and the desired effect is now lost. The drug abuse clouds her mind, and she is unable to focus on real life. To save herself from this insight, she instead makes up stories to fill out the gaps in her own thought process, resembling the Korsakoff syndrome. Oh, bravo, Doctor. How will you treat her? First of all, she needs to be weaned from her drug addiction, and hopefully it will resolve her compulsive lying. Then look into permanently numbing her pain in her back through surgery. Finally, deal with her suicidal thoughts. Fantastic. With such a short time before June, I really hope she gets better soon. We will do what we can. The funny thing... Uh, surgery can't remove pain. That's kind of something that can't be done. Grace Saunders, 11 years old. Reason She's young. Admission? The mother insists on strict supervision by a proper gentleman to avoid further perversion of Grace's adolescence. Personal history? Grace's family possesses modest wealth and status. Her childhood seems ordinary, spending most of her time with private teachers and family friends. Grace's father recently passed away, leaving her mother the sole caregiver. And diagnostic impressions? Grace has trouble dealing with her father's death. She is willingly suppressing her feelings on the matter and isn't properly acknowledging the trauma she suffered. Any planned treatment? Grace needs nothing out of the ordinary. She simply needs parental guidance. Eventually, we can work on her feelings toward her father. Malcolm McCarthy, 54 years of age. Reason for admission? McCarthy admitted himself to Dossetto, stating simply that he needs some damn rest. And personal history? McCarthy claims he used to work as a lawyer in Baton Rouge, but says he can't go into details because of some legal dispute. His background remains largely a mystery except for the occasional clue that he drops in conversation. Huh. And diagnostic impressions? McCarthy is an anxious man and an alcoholic. He often tells half-truths due to some deep-seated inability to trust other people. And how will you treat that? McCarthy will take some time to open up. Spending time with Jack's dog or the child should be good for him. Their harmless nature will help build his sense of trust. Thank you. Elisabetta Perosi, 33 years old? What should I put down as reason for admission? Well, Perosi broke into Dossetto and was found wandering the grand parlor. She was confused and suffered partial amnesia. She insisted she belonged here and offered to pay for her stay. Right. What do you make of her story? Perosi claims to have been a member of the Astarte artist colony some 20 years ago. A claim that seems contrafactual due to her young age. She looks to be and even thinks she is 33 years of age. That would make her a child at the time. It seems fair to say that Perosi's story is untrue. Deliberately so or not. Diagnostic impressions? Do you have anything? Perosi's story is... Peculiar, because she retracted her story about the artist colony. She no longer claims to be the same person as Elisabetta Perosi. However, my staff's research has confirmed there was a Perosi at that time who was in her early thirties. I suppose this case will take some time to investigate. How will you go about it? I wanted to contact the real Perosi, but it seems the whole colony disappeared one night. September 29th, 1915, during a hurricane. 
I will have to take it slow and figure out what this spell of impersonation could have been. Oh, I'm sure it will all clear up. Interesting. Um, Ruth Talon, 29 years of age. Reason for admission? Oh. Ruth's father wishes that his daughter be removed from New Orleans nightlife for the foreseeable future. He fears that her overly free spirit is tarnishing the family's reputation. Sounds simple enough. Personal history? Ruth comes from considerable wealth. Her family owns several hotels and restaurants. Unlike the rest of the family, her sense of adventure has taken her around the world, including France during the Great War as a photojournalist. The last decade, she has provoked many rumors of being a debauched flapper, bordering on nymphomania. And diagnostic impression? Despite her father's frivolous reasons for her to be admitted, Ruth does seem to provide an interesting case. She is refreshingly open and doesn't shy away from talking about her life during the war or her continuous celebration after returning to the States. She is admittedly a sexual deviant and feels no remorse. And her treatment plan? Simply staying at Dorsetto should do wonders for Ruth. If not, at least for her family's reputation. Ruth doesn't need to change, but with therapy I might be able to share with her some sympathy towards her family. I doubt she will settle down and become as dull as the rest of them, but at least she might try to be more discreet in the future. Looks like all the patients are accounted for, except for Jeremy. Yeah. There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. Okay, so I need to find the... Um So we need to get to the boiler room, I think. Treatment room. So I suppose we can't get here. I need the key. Yep. Oh. It's stained. Looks like some kind of rot. This must be the clock that Jeremy wrote about in the commonplace book. Huh. Looks like the plate that held the talisman in the seance room. But it's broken and missing some pieces. Okay, again. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, sorry, detective. Didn't mean to obstruct justice. That's fine. Thing. You know, 
I'm kind of busy with my own case of a missing person. I, I was wondering if you've seen Grace, girl about yay high. I can't say that I have. Why are you asking? Well, I'm looking for her. Is she in trouble? No, 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 no. Uh, she's just uh, hiding somewhere. But we can't have a rascal like that running around unchecked at a time like this. <laughs> he's, a, he's a drunk. Well, I haven't seen her. Well, let me know if you find her. I'll be around. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for your man, Jeremy. You scratch my back, detective, and I'll scratch yours. Please don't. Yeah. McCarthy reminded the. Perosi. Well, in the kitchen garden, I repaired the clock. This is Jeremy's room we already visited. Looks like everything's back to normal here. Emily is here. Okay, the kid actually draw this. I wonder what's in the trunk. Weird tales. Ah, <laughs> the devil plant. Yeah, September 2000, 1928. So this is magazine that where where H.P. Lovecraft wrote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe. That's a Perosi room. Okay, let's see what what's in here. Huh. How eccentric. What are these symbols? Looks like alchemy or star constellations. That's one piece of the puzzle. Do I need to remember how to get them out again? They are locked up for good reason. I am sure she is still able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people. But not for long. I will see her burned soon enough. That black goat will be sacrificed to put an end to it all. Then it will all be over. No more Terceto, and sadly, no Astarte. Those good pirates of Poncha train. May you still sail the lake until you find the shores of Hali. Yeah, th that's a funny, funny thing. This place has a name of Ter Terceto, which is a uh, goddess on of uh, sex and death from the hey, um, Robert Howard's Conan, Conan Hyboria. And Derek Eoto is based on Astarte, ancient goddess from real, real life. So this is pretty nice. Also, so Aquarius, Scorpio and 
Sagittarius. Yastarte Artist Colony. I remember hearing about their disappearance. It must have been 15 years or more now. Lisbetta Perosi. Looks like it. Like the same. These paintings got some grim looking rot on them. the thresholds to my intended destination without a focusing device. My talisman now knows these roads, and I have no need for the plates. I can find my way to Lafayette as easy as I find my own room. Okay. I visited the grave of my father and seen the oven waiting for me. Thank you for opening these doors. I now must summon my courage and go back to that hateful mound outside the oil rig. I hope you'll be feeling better when I return, Jeremy. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, not that one. There's his journal. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I need number. I need three numbers. Who get notes. And there's nine people here. Three names should be. I have two names now. Not the MacMan. Okay, mm. thank you. Arx, Mosik, Keith. Arx on is two. Keith is four. And Mosik is. Nine, two, two, four, nine. In the order. Two, four, nine. Two, four, and nine. Taurus is in, in the middle. Yeah, it is. So 
Bit of spices. Two, two, four, nine. Pisces. Taurus. Libra. Okay, that was got it. Right order. Wonder where the road is coming. Yeah. <laughs> He's lo losing sanity. <laughs> 